Welcome back to my studio. This is Roland Lee. The painting I'm going to do today is a, kind of a desert painting. It's out in Warner Valley, which is near where I live. And there's some neat old corrals out there that I really like, especially when they're juxtaposed against a nice sky and some of the cliffs that are out there. This is the photographic reference that I'm working from today. And uh, I'm not going to change a whole lot of things about that. I like the composition when I saw it, and I wanted to maintain that in the painting. And there'll be a few little changes here and there. That always happens with the paintings that I do. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this right now. As you can see from this photograph here, it's got some interesting skies, and um, I want to kind of maintain that. that it has a lot to do with the composition, with these clouds running back behind here and here. And I've sketched it out on my paper uh, with a pencil here, and it, it looks very, very light to you. And it's, that's the way I want it, because I don't want the pencil marks to show through too much. I'm going to go ahead and get started on this right now. I'm going to take this uh, hake brush. Um, it's uh, just a very inexpensive brush, but it's about four inches wide, and I like to use it to wet the whole paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work only on that sky area. Uh, since these posts are lighter than, or darker than the sky, and the sky is is lighter than they are. I can just work on this uh, sky and get it all wet and I'm just going to paint this right behind these posts and everything else. I'm going to wet the whole paper, not that I need to right now, but it helps to keep the paper a little flatter if you wet the whole thing and keep the, the moisture content consistent throughout. The paper is, of course, like a fabric. It's 100% cotton, which means that the, the paper is really a fabric. So when we soak that fabric and drop some pigment into the top, it's going to suck its way down into the fibers, just kind of like the way a sponge would do. Well, that's great um, for a painting like this because we want to keep the, the uh, fabric of the paper uh, moist as long as we can till we get that painting done. Now I want to use a few of my favorite colors here. I'm going to work on first the grays up here in the white part of the cloud shapes. I'm going to mix up some yellow ochre. I'm going to mix up some little wash of cadmium red light. It's a very warm red and that's going to help me to make this into an orange. I'm going to combine those with my ultramarine blue, which is over here. I'll get a little bit more water there as I pull that pigment out. And I'm going to... I'm going to combine those three, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and ultramarine blue. And those are the things that are going to make my grays. Now, I'll use kind of ultramarine blue for the sky, but I'm going to begin this as I look at it. I can tip the paper up and tip it back a little bit and see that it's still quite moist. Well, that's just fine. I'm going to have some darker shadows up in here in the, the cloud shapes. And... Um, This will be the darker side since the sunlight's coming this way. We want to be sure and, and allow for that. And then I'm going to bring some shadows right down 
through this cloud shape as well. I'm going to bring in some reds. This is your cadmium red light. And this makes kind of an orange up into here. And I'll let a little of that drift down into I'm going to keep this side of the cloud white and the top of this one white. But I'm going to bring some of that right down into it. And I'm going to, when I put the blue on top of that now, this is my next step. I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of pigment here. I'm letting that settle down into the, the paper. I really want that to, to kind of work its way down. Because each time you touch the brush to the paper, you add more water to it. So now I'm going to touch the blue right on top of these other colors. And this is going to form the gray that I want. It's going to come all the way out here. And I'm making these nice cloud shapes with my brush so that there's going to be some variety up into here. Now I'm going to, at the top, I'm going to make that quite a bit darker. I'm touching a little bit of quinacridone coral. Make kind of a violet way up in there. Now I'm going to bring that in here and let that pigment be this darker part right up in the corner. And let that come across. Now down here for this cloud, I'm going to keep it fairly light. But I'm just going to use a little bit of this gray that I've already made right up in here. Bring a touch of red into it. And do the bottom part of these clouds that come along here to this shape. Okay. Those will be off in the distance there. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to paint the blue of the sky. But I want that to be fairly dry because I want a reasonably hard edge along here. So I'm going to kind of let that go for a second and let this settle down into the fiber of the paper. Put just a little bit more red up in here. feels pretty good. Now I'm going to clean my brush out really well and get some straight ultramarine blue with a tiny touch of phthalo to warm it up. Okay, now I'm going to paint this blue part right over here and down into here. So I'm going to test how wet my paper is by touching the edge here. And you can see it leads kind of a hard edge. That means I'm going to get this wonderful hard edge right up here. And yet, because of the way my brush is, I'm going to give a real ragged edge to it and let it kind of pop out a little bit. And then I'll bring this down and form the top edge of this one down in here. I'm going to run that right over the post for now. I don't want to concern myself with that very much. Okay, and I'm going to come down here now. I think I'll just let a little bit of that come up there. Now I'm going to come down here with this blue. I think I'll touch a little bit of, of cerulean into that, which is a little bit greener along the bottom. And just bring that here along the bottom edge of this cloud, right along the bottom. And this will come clear down to these mountains, and I'll keep that smooth. Okay, so now I've got this cloud shape created, this cloud shape created, and I'm ready to move on uh, with the painting. I think I'll break a little bit through here. So it has just a little more variety in this cloud. Okay. 
Okay, now I've got some of these pure whites showing through because the paper was dry there. And that's what gives the shape to this cloud. Okay, so we'll let it go at that. We'll let this dry down a little bit. Then I'm going to lay in the lighter um, reds and some of these tones down in here uh, as I come back to it. I'm going to use a color called quinacridone sienna. And it's kind of an orange and looks like this. And I'm going to use that for these colors down in here. This is the red sand uh, as it comes back through. And the posts are going to be lighter than that sand, or darker than the sand is. But I'm not going to work my way back into there too much. But I'm going to come forward now, bring a touch of blue into that to dull it down and then get that really nice pink in the foreground here by using this quinacridone sienna and a touch of coral make it more red. I'm going to just kind of leave this edge sort of raggedy here because I'm going to be picking up some lights from this bush as it comes through. And then I'll just scumble by using the side of my brush to get these reds into the foreground right here. And I'll warm that up right here with some yellow ochre. And now I've got the sand in place. And I will just leave these edges kind of loose here because I'm going to come back in and I'm going to need some highlights right along here on these lights. So I won't mess with that too much. But I go, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of tone back behind here where the distant cliffs are. And make sure it's very, very light so I can get my highlights. And that's my start. Okay. Now I'll let this dry down. And I'll come back to it and keep working. Uh, I'm going to wait for just a second. As this settles down here, I'm going to do some splattering in this foreground. Still a little bit wet, but I can get some texture down into there, which is really nice for the sand shape. It's texture back into there that we really couldn't build any other way. Now I'll just let all that die down. We'll come back to it in a minute. Now as the sky is drying down in this foreground uh, area that kind of fills in this space right here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to start working on these two posts that come clear up against the sky. Now I can just bring them right over that sky because they're going to be darker than that. So I'll dive in there and do that right now. So I'll mix up, I'm going to use a little yellow ochre here at the bottom. They're kind of warm, but I do want them to be a gray. So once again, I'll touch a little bit of red into it using once again, the ultramarine blue to darken it. And uh, I'll t take a little touch of this uh, quinacridone coral over here. Now I'll have these out in my well so that I can reach into them as I go. But I want there to be quite a, quite a mixture of uh, color and tone as I work my way through this. So I'm going to start with the lighter value. And this will be on the sunny side, this will be the, some of these lighter values in here. Each time I come in, I'm going to grab a different color. And I'm just going to kind of establish these shapes right in here. I'm going to kind of soften the edge of that blue as it comes behind, but it's going to be plenty dark. And I'll just get this shape in here. And this will tell me where I'm headed. Okay, now I'll bring the dark over on this side. And bring it down. And once again, leave the lighter on this other side. 
and I start to get a pretty believable uh, post there. I'll bring this other red, which is a, the quinacridone coral, as so we come down and approach the bottom. Now I've got to cut around this right here, these that come out light. I'm going to cut around those, grab some darks. There, I like that pretty well. That's a good start. Now I'm going to come over and do this one on this side too. So I'm going to come over here and bring in a little bit of the, that light yellow again. This is yellow ochre. And I might just use a little bit of this quinacridone gold and warm that up slightly over here. But already we get a pretty good feeling now as we get these over the clouds of where we're going to be in relation to, to the, the parts in relation to each other. And we can feel that sense of uh, distance that we have. I'm going to grab some of this dark again and trim down this side right up against the edge. And make a few places where those little, little gnarly things come out of the cedar post there. Once again, I'll kind of trace around that post that comes out there that supports it, keep it fairly light. and bring this down to this area. I'm going to have some bushes, these bushes that kind of come out into here, so I'm going to leave that fairly nebulous right at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to get the other, what I'm working on then is the, these front posts, this one, this one, this one, and this one, get them in, then I'll do the, the ones behind it, and that'll give me an idea of where I'm headed. So I'm going to do the shadow side of this. And I'll just leave this light side on it. I'll come over here and pick up a combination of these and do this post over here. Pull some yellow to create a mixture. Bring that right down. That's a good start. We've got that coming along now. So now with these foreground ones in place, I can I can come back in and I will in a minute and really shape these so that they look round. I'll kind of lift this side a little bit and darken some others. But as that starts to dry down, I'll I'll do a little bit more of that. Where we have some some of these post knots and, and the whatnot that come out through there, but we can lift those at any time. Okay, now I'm going to do these cross boards that come up through here, and again, I want those to be different. I want them to be a different. Uh, color entirely, but I want them to stay warm. I'm going to bring some blue in here with a touch of this. That's going to give me kind of a, a gray. And so I'll dole back the colors with that, but I want to stay in these warm tones and maybe pick up even some of this quinacridone sienna that's here and pull some yellows out into here with my yellow ochre in this well quinacridone gold in this well, 
you can see the difference in the temperature. These are cooler, and then this is warmer over here. So I'm going to start with an underlay then. See how dry that is. And I'm going to get this top board that comes up to here. And I've got to be careful. I want this to kind of be the same color all the way up so it looks like the same board. And a little warmer as it comes towards us. I should wait until these are completely dry, but I think we're close enough now that that we can we can do this and I can shape these. We want these to connect top and bottom. And then I'm gonna tie them together slightly with a little bit of blue in here. Okay, now I'm going to come in here again, alter the color just a little bit, but again, keep it very warm. Come in to do this board. Okay, so once again, at this point, we're working on our lightest values, okay? But look at the variety of colors that we have in there. It's all in the same value range, but there's a lot uh, of uh, variety that's going on in here. Kind of studying these out carefully now as we get down here. I want to leave a few little highlights where the board in front... Um, meets the board behind and the sunlight is coming from up above and so there's going to be a little highlight of light and it'll be very important to us to include that as we come down. This is a broken board here right in the front and um, again we're working on our lightest lights here and then I'll not leave another little light right there we're going to keep our head on straight when we're doing these so we know which, which board we're on. Probably not the most exciting thing in the world to watch, uh, but then again, if if you uh, got this video, then you're apparently semi-interested in uh, in this whole process. <laughs> so, so we'll just have to labor through this together. Okay, I think we got that under control. Now let's let that dry. And while it's doing that, I'm going to scumble with the side of my brush to get some of these grasses down in here. I'm just going to work the side of that brush using a little bit of uh, uh, sap green and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre. And I'm just going to scumble with my brush and give an indication that, that that's there. And I'll take a little bit of this quinacridone sienna with the green, sap green. And I'm going to darken this part right down in here. 
in this corner to kind of give it a base to set on. Okay, I'll lighten that, come across here with a little bit more. Now, I will soften a few of these edges as these come up against the up against the the, uh, the darks that are going to come through here from this shadow. I'll just kind of carefully now mold and shape the fronts of these bushes as they come down, leaving a little bit of negative painting to it. those shapes and link them a little bit together so that they flow. Then I'm going to come back here and pick up some sage around in this area. And I'm doing all of this while the rest of this is drying. So uh, we, we build things up in, in patterns and shapes and uh, watch them kind of grow. I'm going to use a little bit of um, the cerulean which is going to give a little bit of sage color. Uh, and adjust that to some of these shapes that are going to come forward here. A little bit of yellow to it and We're going to want to see these, see these shapes overlap and move back in space. Don't let that come through there a little bit. There we go. And then I'll put a little bit of darker blue right down here along this bottom to give some weight to this and some mass as so I pull this shape up I'll let that just fade off to the background okay so we can feel this shape moving forward which I really like and so we'll leave that in a little bit of color up here at the top the size of this Shrub. Okay, that's a good start. Now, what we're going to do at this point is we're going to we're going to let this whole thing dry. Then I'll come in and I'll continue to work on and finish these boards up in here and, and give that some power by getting the darks in behind here. And this, uh, what's going to really plant it to the ground is getting this cast shadow that comes across here and comes up the back there. That's going to add a lot to it. So we'll stop here and let it dry down completely. Now that's all we need to do on that right now. But let's work on some of these darks. Okay, I'm going to take a um, some of these uh, more earthy reds back in here. I'm going to couple that with the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to make these darks back behind here quite a bit darker than the ones in the front. And I'll preserve a little space on this side for the lights, but these things are going to go into the background a little bit. And cut back through. Now we'll continue to uh, work on this and 
and um, bring up the darks through additional glazes as we go. But in order to keep uh, moving along at the right pace, then we'll just work on these uh, posts individually at a time. Now already that makes a difference, but we see these darks back there, but we don't see any shape to them. So I'm going to come right here on this side now and soften this side a little bit. And it's still dark, but now we bring it around a little bit. Bring the darks on this side and leave it lighter on that side. Back in here it isn't going to matter, but that helps that to look around. Now let's come forward and come up here to this one. And we're going to have some pretty good darks, especially in these places where these these knots come out. And then right down this side, because the sunlight's coming this way, um, we won't see a lot of the shadow, but it's going to come down this side. And right down this edge, we're going to need to see a, a dark. And as we begin to put these darks in, that's when we really start to uh, to see some mass and form. I'll soften this edge up a little bit, just slightly here to help it turn. Now notice how those darks here, as soon as we put those in, we needed these a darker dark because these are up closer. And now as we continue to adjust that and add it, we see the sense of roundness and form on that. So that's enough for now. We'll come back to it in a minute. And let's come over to these on this side. So I'm going to come back here And get this post. Again, I'll leave just a little bit of a highlight along there. I could touch those up in a minute. But let's soften this side right here. So it has a certain roundness to it. And down here, we won't worry about that too much. We'll just get the darks back in here. And bring those down. So we start to see these uh, these other boards back behind it. You come up here and pick up this one. And continue this one down. And then we'll darken this up as we need to. But already, we, because we see overlapping shapes, we start to get that feeling that we're going back in space. And we keep building that up as we go. Let's go in here and get this. And I'll keep, keep going, and uh, these darks are going to end up being quite a bit darker than this even. But let's just go ahead and get these 
in there to this point. Okay, now we'll bring our darks forward like we did over here and start to uh, shape this big post. Okay, continue to shape this. I'm making this forward one just a little bit warmer than this one is back here. And then I'll bring in a little bit of this blue and gray this down right up here where it turns. Alright, now I'll soften some of these outside edges, meaning where it turns over like this, and shape those, and it's starting to look pretty good. Alright, now, so that we can uh, really continue this um, in the right way, let's get the shadows in that are underneath here and let's give a base for this right now. So I'm going to go ahead and create a dark here and it might need to be darker than this. Once we get these shadows down here it really helps for us to to be able to see how things go. I'm putting a little magenta in there, which is which is really dark, but dark but warm. And I hope this is dark enough. If it's not, I can come back to it. Now, on the other side of this, we have another shadow that comes out. Let's see, we'll just kind of keep pursuing this shadow shape and this post that comes down right here and extends down. That'll be quite dark too. And then keep coming. Coming along here. And right here, where this shadow comes here, I'm going to leave a few places where these grasses are going to stick up into it. This is a negative painting right here leaving some of these grasses and weeds that come up against that. I'm going to pay attention to that as we move over here. Makes a little bit more of this dark, dark. having to really kind of study this out. That's why I'm so quiet. I'm thinking as I go. And um, got to get this cast shadow down there and this one underneath here. Now I'll move these shadows out here across this area. Thank you. 
Okay, now it starts to plant it down on the ground so we can see where things are going. And that helps us to envision this whole thing uh, coming together as well. Now there'll be some darks down under here, underneath these these little bushes and shrubs and this will be a, um, their cast shadow so I think I'll get a few of those coming out here right now as well I know where they're gonna be So I want all this to kind of run together down into here in these darks. Now let's Okay, things are starting to come together. And uh starting to look like something. Alright, now we want to uh begin to to, sh to shape everything, get the darks in where they go, and uh, make it work. But you'll notice that these boards right here, like this one right here, this one, this one, this one, they cast a shadow on the boards underneath it. Well, let's just take a look at that for a minute. Over here, where this board comes down, we have a cast shadow that comes like this. I'll just do it lightly so you can see. But often I'll reserve um, at this point in the painting to come in here and to um, use my pencil and actually draw in some of the things that are going to refine it a little more. And so rather than draw them all in at the start, we wait until some of these values are down on the paper and dried, and then we can come back in with a pencil. So I'm just going to kind of shape these shadows as I see them uh, coming down here and being cast across these boards in front. And uh, and then those are going to be dark. This will be light because this is casting this shadow over here. Well, we come over here and this post is casting a pretty long shadow because where the sun is here over on on this area so let's get that in and kind of indicate that those are going to be dark there too this one has a cast shadow that comes out across here. And since these boards aren't exactly in position, the shadows is going to come in and out just a little. And we want it to do that. Now, right, right now it looks like it has... Um, pretty good form and mass. But once we put these shadows in here, it's going to really help. So I'm going to mix a little bit of blue over here with some yellow ochre. And I need some red into it because it's going to be cast across these red boards. But it's going to be dark. A, a cast shadow is always darker than a form shadow. And so we've got to make these quite dark. So I'll work these along in here and get those cast shadows to work that way forward. And once we add the shadows, we really feel the direction of the sun. So that's why we want to get these in. The shadows are our friend. We, they really help us to, to define the shape for the viewer and tell the viewer what's going on in the painting. 
and in this scene, just like in nature. Uh, we look out there and we see these shadows. We learn to, to live with them. And um, they help us to identify where we are in space. We don't want these to be too straight because this is a, a bendy post here. Okay, let's bring this down now. In here. And now I'm going to get this shadow from this one over here. And once I get these dark darks in, um, I'll be able to evaluate where I need to work next on this. This is very important though to get these in position, get them correct. Okay, so now we have uh, a painting. We know what this is going to look like. We have a really good feeling for it now. Once again, let me hold it up this direction <coughs> and see what remains to be done now, which will probably take me about another half hour or so. Uh, probably won't bore you with all of that, but with some of it. Let's go ahead and pick up uh, some of this uh, this little red band that goes across here. I like that. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like a ditch or something. But I like that horizontal look because it helps helps us to feel like we're going back in space. And I'm going to just work that and get a few little details and bushes back in there. But these little horizontal lines that come along here they help us to really feel like it goes back in space like this cloud is big and this cloud is narrow and then these get even more narrow down towards the bottom and it just gives us that feeling of going back in space now these lights that we've left here and here and here and here and here and here are pretty important and we want to have a little bit more of that going on down in here I'm going to show some some sticks in the foreground uh, and I'll do that through negative painting like you see these little sticks laying around down in here I'm gonna I'm gonna create some of those by painting around the, the shape of them. We've got to have a few of these highlights up there. We have to see the lights. That's, that's what tells us that it's up close is the lights. So we want to see some light shapes and we have to build those we have to do that by painting the darks to reveal the lights. So now we sense that there's some sticks or something down in here because of the lights, not because of the darks. So I'll continue to bring a little bit of that same thing down in here. Let's make it a little darker. I'll start to bring some of this in. And as you see these little light shapes that are here, some of them might be rocks, some of them might be sticks, 
but we need to see a little bit of that to make it feel like it comes forward. Very important. So we're using our dark shapes to create the light ones. Okay, now we'll come back to this in a minute. See how important these lights are right in here to get sparkle to the foreground and pull it out. Okay, let's let that dry down now. So I like how this is coming together. It uh, looks pretty good. It's a pretty literal translation of the, the, the reference photo over here. But I think it's coming along all right. Okay, now let's come back here and shape these bushes a little bit. This one's going to be in front. Okay, and in order to make those cross over, I'm going to let one or two branches really come out of here. And I'll do it by darkening up this area around this side. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll let these bushes overlap each other. So they come around, around, and around, and comes clear out here to this one, which will be in the front in this kind of a shape. I think I'm going to put one over here just so I can touch this edge. Um, now I'm going to shape those. I should clean my palette probably, but let's just grab some of this pigment and I can use what's here a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, now this is going to just kind of work on these in uh, no particular order. Now I'll soften these outside edges and leave these little white spaces in here. I'll soften this outside edge and bring this one around come right up against this edge. So we're seeing the sun hit on the, the highlight side of these. Go ahead and soften that. You know, at this point, I'm just really looking at certain parts of this and saying, where do I need the darks and where do I need the lights? That's much more important than what's there, is how I treat what's there. And um, you just have to kind of analyze and look at it and, and uh, do your best to pick up the feeling of it, more so than just a literal interpretation. I'm going to come down in a little more of this blue, the cerulean down into this part. This outside edge, and I'm getting pretty darn close now. It's a good place up here for uh, a few rocks and pebbles and things like that, right up here in the foreground. 
but I'm going to do some negative painting right here. Do a couple of branches that come up, really weeds, I guess, sticks, something that come up light against dark, right here in the foreground to kind of balance this. I'm trying to give it kind of a base to sit on down here as well, so that we the viewer comes into the painting and steps through some of these weeds and some of this uh, stuff right up here in the front and works their way back. That's what I want to have happen here. There we go. Now I think let's uh, Let's slide this over and grab a mat here and uh, I've got it ready to go so I'm going to lay this over the top and see how this painting feels. Okay, I like the feel of it. It's a nice desert scene. Now I'm going to set it aside and we'll look at it for a little while. I might touch up a few things here and there and that's it. So thanks so much for joining me in my studio. I appreciate you coming by to watch this painting and uh, to see us kind of build this thing up and uh, step by step from the design to the finished. Now, the design and the composition is really important and that's the same for any painting or any kind of design work. The way we approach the painting, that's different. In oils, it's entirely different than watercolors. And from one watercolor to artist to the next. Each one has his own style and techniques and and uh, some of my favorite painters paint in a style that I, I couldn't even replicate if I tried to. But I love the painting and I love the feeling that it creates and that's what we're getting to with the artwork is what is the feeling that's there? Uh, what, is it, what does it make you feel like as you look at it? And that's the most important part. But composing a painting right from the start we're looking at, at uh, what are the value shapes more so than what color it is if you get the values right the colors are really won't matter the color is valuable and important but only about 20 percent 80 percent of it is is the success of your value patterns so i like to look at that and, and i feel pretty comfortable with this painting here and what's going on uh, in it it's very lonely and yet free out in the the desert uh, the the posts and the wood is weathered and gnarly just like the desert is and yet you have this big billowy clean beautiful sky that's coming across there so i like the feel of it well thanks for joining me uh, for this painting today and i hope you'll come back and join me in the studio again and uh, if not maybe we'll see you out on the trail somewhere thanks for coming i'm roland lee